Good evening, this is Pastor Barbara, a.k.a. Preacher with Parrots. Today is the 23rd of October of 2016. I've had a little hard, a little difficulty getting started. Um, I just laid my Bible, I think, down on one of the keyboards, um, doing two computers at the same time. We have a live broadcast because it's Sunday night, and on Sunday night, we're studying the New Testament. Uh, Wednesday nights, we study the Old Testament. Basically, it will be from the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, newest English translation of the Dead Sea Bible. Um, we do that on Wednesday nights. Um, we're in Genesis in the Old Testament, and we're in the Gospels in the New, so we've only been starting this third time through the Bible um, for a couple of months now. And on Sunday mornings, we're studying prophecy. All right, I'll see if I can keep from dropping things or doing something to get myself disconnected. We're going to go to the uh, temptation in the wilderness. Last Sunday night, we talked about John the Baptist, about the fact that he emphasized um, repentance. A study of salvation is very similar to our study of prophecy, for example. The study of prophecy in the Bible doesn't start here and then go to the next and the next and the next and the next and everything is in order. And those of us who teach prophecy, while the book of Revelation occurs in the chronological order in which it happened, the prophecies by the Old Testament prophets don't. And it's a matter of finding what goes here, what goes there, what goes here, and giving it to you in some kind of word. The, the salvation is like that. It's not just give your heart to Jesus. It's not just believe in him and you'll be saved. There are many, many, many parts, and it's a little difficult to preach on all of them at the same time. But a very, very, very important part of the teaching and preaching and baptizing of John the Baptist was to present Christ as the one who was promised in the Bible that was coming, that it was Jesus. And until the day that he presented Jesus to the crowd for who he was, until that day, he had been baptizing after the people repented of their sin. Now, he wasn't in a position, there wasn't yet any remedy for it, but he was making people aware that they should be aware of their sin and they should repent, which means so sorry that you don't really want to do it again, and you're really sorry that you're offend, you have offended Jesus. Now, that is not giving your heart to Jesus. That's part of it. And so we ended John the Baptist's part. We do hear from him another time or two, but pretty much he has done what he was sent to do and what it was prophesied in the last two verses of the Old Testament that he would do when he came. Now, we're in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we're going to start in Matthew, and we're talking about Jesus' temptation. Then, Matthew 4.1, was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness? Let me comment on the Spirit. Remember when Jesus was baptized? We studied that last week. And the word says, when he came up out of the water, 
there was a voice, that of God the Father, we're talking Trinity now, there was a voice that said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then, of course, God the Son, who was being baptized, and out of the heavenlies came a dove, the Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, because the Spirit doesn't have its own body. And the Spirit took on the form of a dove, and landed on his shoulder. So we have a beautiful picture of the Trinity in Jesus' baptism. But he was led by the Spirit. Now on, we're going to see the Holy Spirit leading him, just like the Holy Spirit leads us. When you do something and your conscience bothers you and you've got a little devil sitting on your shoulder or a little angel sitting on this one and this is saying don't do it, this is saying do it, that's not an angel sitting on their shoulder. That's not your conscience. That's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will if we ask him to, if we want him to, if we allow him to, will lead us every day of our life. If you want to do your own thing, he's not going to beat you on the head with a baseball bat and say, nope, this is what I want you to do. But if you want to be led by the Spirit, you can be led on the Spirit. When it first happens to you and you're a young Christian, you're saying, hmm, could that be the Holy Spirit? But after you've been a Christian for a little bit, it, it's like you're a kid. You don't know sometimes you meet somebody you've never met before and you, you don't know uh, what to say to them or how you should act. You're not sure, but pretty soon you catch on. Serving the Lord is like that. There's a lot of things you don't know on day one or on week one or on month one or maybe even year one. But little by little, if you let the Holy Spirit lead you, he will. And even Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. God the Son, while he walked around earth in a human body, was led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Is the Holy Spirit, does he want you to be tempted? He doesn't want you to give into a suggestion of Satan. But he's not saying, don't ever have contact with him. Come to Jesus and you're going to be protected. We're going to put a big net over you. We're not going to let anything bad ever happen to you. You're never going to meet people that don't like you. You're never going to have anybody who wants to take advantage of you. That's not life on earth. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Now, he's between Jericho and Jerusalem. That's in the, where he was when he was baptized. That's in the southern part. Um, uh, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls and the Dead Sea. And by the way, the Dead Sea, the, inter, the uh, national border, or the international border between Jordan and Israel, goes right through the middle of the Dead Sea. I mentioned it this morning when I was mentioning Petra in Jordan, a place where probably in prophecy the remnant of Jews 
that will go to another city and hide out there and be protected with. So that's the area. Uh, Jerusalem is of those two cities is north and the area of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Dead Sea is south. And it is, much of it, a desert place. So he was led by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of being tempted. The Lord will never tempt you of something. He will not give you the power to overcome. But if you think you're going to get through life and never have hard times, if you think you're never going to be tempted, it's not going to happen that way. But in the midst of temptation, and all you have to do is look to the Lord and lean on him and on the Holy Spirit for a leading, and he'll get you through. And then you're going to say, wow, I can get tempted and not give in. And you're going to feel real good about yourself and real good about your future. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible talks about fasting and prayer. Uh, things happen to our body when we fast a long time. When I first started prayer and praise, we used to have about every two months uh, a time when we had fasting and prayer. And I used to teach on different kinds of fast because there are people that because of age or illness, it's not wise for them to go without eating. Some people are taking medicines for their health. No preacher in their right mind is going to suggest that they take one of those medicines that says take with food when they're fasting. Nor are we going to suggest that you not take your medicine. So there are a number of different fasts. Now there are some people, I don't know whether they don't have a dictionary or not, but they're going to say, well, I'm doing a not going to watch television fast. In other words, when we go without food, and by the way, going without food is not going without water. I got a phone call from a dear friend of 60, over 60 years, another minister. She's older than I am, if you can believe that. And she'd been ill and dehydrated. Fasting is not going without water. Fasting is going without food. And the body goes through changes and pretty soon you're not hungry. Those changes, I have never done a 40 day fast. Uh, just about the time that I knew anything about it or could, I was an evangelist. <laughs> And um, I never tried to preach a revival without eating. But when he got through, he was hungry. This isn't a lesson on fasting, so I won't go into it. But it is scriptural. It's not for everybody, and not everybody does the same kind of fast. Uh, after I got cancer... Um, which is what, eight to nine years ago, something like that, uh, and had surgery and was generally weak and run down. Uh, I haven't gone on a fast like that simply because of medicine that I take. But when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and after that he was hungry, and when the tempter, the tempter is Satan. Somebody may come to you and say, 
Did you see that good looking gal over there? That's not the tempter. That's the person the tempter is using. The tempter is the same one that came to Jesus and tempted him. So he's not really too bright. When the tempter came to them, he said, be careful of these words. You'll hear them a lot in your lifetime. They're meant to get you right where it hurts. The tempter came and said, If thou be the Son of God, what do you mean, if thou be the Son of God? Satan lived in heaven. He was one of the top worship angels in music. And he was beautiful. He was admired by other angels. He lived with God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit in heaven before he decided he wanted to be top dog. And he started a revolution. And he and his followers got kicked out of heaven. And this was a bit before Genesis 1 1. If you be the Son of God, Jesus knew he was the Son of God. Satan sure knows he's the Son of God. But when somebody comes to you and says, Well, if you really love God, or your kids will say, Dad, if you really love me, of course you love him, but kid wants something, right? So that's a good starting sentence. That's a good come on. If you, uh, hang on. If thou be the son of God, do such and such. you're a Christian or I can imagine now during the election time and I've heard the debates and I hear the comments and the speeches well if you care about women if you care about children if you care about people in other countries if 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 there's no question I don't know among my circle of friends anybody that doesn't care about women and what happens to them and children and what happens to them and our country and what happens to it. This is just a stinking starting. Come on. If, if you're really a man, do such and such. If you're really who you say you are, do such and such. Sorry, I recognize the devil coming when I hear that kind of language. Then, if you're the son of God, prove it. No, 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 no. I don't have to prove to anybody I'm a woman. I don't have to prove to anybody I'm a born-again believer. I don't have to do something or say something. I am what I am. God knows who I am. Satan knows who I am. And he knows that I know where the door is. And he said, if thou be the son of man, God, command these stones to be made bread. Can Jesus, Jesus do that? Of course he can. But why should he do it? Just because Satan says do it. People will come up to you and say, well, taste it. Maybe you'll like it. Look, I don't want to like it. Um, I had somebody who thought I should be giving them money. Uh, say to me after I was about, I was in uh, my late 30s. 
and I was teaching public school and had been for about three years, so I could now afford to do things I couldn't afford to do when my money came in the offering plate of very often very poor people. And Rosa and I went to Hawaii. It cost us $400 each uh, to be in a Christmas vacation. Um, the trip over there on a plane, the trip back, all the places we went and the transportation while we were there was $400. Well, somebody would rather I had given the $400 to them and started criticizing me for it. I went across the street to a liquor store <laughs> and I said, I want to know how much is a six pack of beer and a carton of cigarettes? And they said, well, that depends. What kind of beer are we talking about? And what kind of cigarettes are we talking about? And I said, I don't know. I just want to know how much it is. I want to know how many days would $400 last me if I drank a six pack of beer and smoked two cartons of cigarettes, two uh, packs of cigarettes a day? How long would it take me to go through? I don't have to try it to know I don't want it. It's stupid. There's always the possibility you can become addicted to it. Of course, you can take medicine and get addicted to it. I've got medicine that says, don't su suddenly stop taking it. Your body won't like it and it'll get mad. And that happens. But you don't have to do it just because somebody says, if, or you ought to try this, or you're not scared, are you? And he said, if you're the son of God, then command these stones to be bread. Why did Satan pick bread? Bread's not eating bread is actually a physical necessity. We got to eat and bread is certainly not lobster. Bread is certainly not expensive and out of sight. But Jesus doesn't have to prove to anybody who he is. And neither do you. Be who you should be. And you have to brag about it. But you don't have to be ashamed of it. And Jesus said, what should he have said? He said, it is written. A few years into his ministry, Jesus may have said, the prophet said such and such. Or he may have said, Moses in the law said such and such. But he said, same thing. It is written. That's all I need. I don't need excuses. I don't need to brag on it. All I need to know is where I place my faith, it says that I don't live on bread. You want me to do something I don't have to do to prove to you who I know I am and who you know I am just to make you happy so that you, big man Satan, gets to say, I commanded him to do something and he did it. Jesus said, you got to be kidding. You think I need bread? If I needed bread, and he was hungry, and Jesus will come, or Satan, I'm sorry, will come to you when you need something. When you're grieving at the loss of someone you love, 
if God really loves you, why did God take the child? And Satan said, you think I need bread? If I needed bread, all I have to do is say to my father, I need bread. But I could take a stone, I could take anything, and turn this into a loaf of bread. So why would I want to give in to the devil just to prove who I am? I don't need it. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God's word is what I need, not bread. Bread I need. But more than bread, I need the word of God. And then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And I'm not going to make this message longer by going into the pinnacle of the temple and where it was. It was part of the temple. So they're on the uh, temple mount in the city of Jerusalem, city of David. And by the way, Jesus is now 30 years old. It's been roughly six years since one Roman governor wanted to draw attention to himself and his abilities. And he had just done some new renovating and some beautiful things in the temple. And he took him to the top of the temple. By the way, I haven't been to the top of the temple, but I stood on a wall right where the temple used to be and took some pictures of the eastern gate. If I, I can't even get on this first rung of a ladder now. I never got more than the third rung because I, I have this thing about heights. But I stood up there because to the day, I still like to get the best camera shot I can. He took him up there and he said, if thou be the son of God, if you're really a Christian, if you're a citizen, if you're this, if you're the other, we've been there, done that. Cast yourself down. Why would you want to throw yourself off of a high place? To prove that God's going to pick you up before you hit bottom? I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I am who I am. How much more Jesus is who he is. He submitted himself to this temptation to teach us what to do when we're, we get under temptation. It gets easier the longer you serve Jesus. But you never get without, oh, I'd like to tell him when I really think about him. You never ever get to where you're never tempted. The longer you walk with the Lord, the longer you live for the Lord, it becomes a habit. But we're never absent from being in a situation where Satan would like to do a sin. You just jump off because it's written. You think Satan doesn't know the Bible? He's not a very good interpreter of it. Uh, but he knows it. And he knows what it means. Can you imagine Satan quoting scripture? Listen. He'll do whatever it takes to get you 
where he wants you. Because then he's won. It was prophesied. He would bruise the heel of Jesus. But Jesus, the son of Mary, would bruise his head on the cross. His heel was bruised. In the Garden of Gethsemane, his heel was bruised. And on the Sunday that followed, early in the morning, when the women got to the tomb, they found out that Satan's head had been bruised. It's written, he'll give his angels charge to concern thee. And they're just going to come and they're going to put their hands, says Satan, to Jesus. They'll just put their hands right under you and catch you. And they'll bear thee up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Those angels aren't even going to let you scratch yourself. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Again, I'm standing on the word. It's written, devil. Jesus said unto him, Wait a minute. It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't do it. You're wasting your time. You know, if I'd been the head angel, if I'd been kicked out of heaven and landed on planet Earth, I don't think I would run around trying to tell the second person of the Godhead any information about anything spiritual. But he said it's written, don't tempt the Lord God. Again the devil taken him to exceeding high mountain. There are some high places in that desert. I think I may know of what mountain they may be talking about. There's nothing in Israel high enough that you can look down and see the whole world. I'm higher here on in Lake Arrowhead, uh, in the San Bernardino Mountains and the San Bernardino Forest. That I can look down one mile and see San Bernardino below me. There's nothing that high there. But he took them to one place where you can look down. This used to be a safe place to be, was on a mountain in a high place, because you could look down and see anybody coming. And you can't be surprised. If you're behind a wall, you don't know what's on the other side of the wall. You can't see anything unless you're on the wall looking. But if you're in a high place, you're you're looking for your out for your own safety. The devil took him to a high mountain. This is the third temptation. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. Look at all that. Now, Satan was given a position on earth. That's why it's so refreshing on Sunday mornings to preach about the time when he will be chained up and for almost a thousand years people will live on earth without him and his big mouth and his nasty suggestions you think he would know better but he said see all of this it's true he is over the earth 
See all this? Let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1, the true beginning of the Bible. In the beginning was the Word. That's G another name for Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And nothing that was made was made if it wasn't made by him. So the devil can say, see all that that I'm in charge of? And Jesus knew in his heart. Of course he could see it. Did he know what it was? Hey, he created it. Nothing that was created, nothing exists. If he didn't make it, if it exists, if there are kingdoms, if there are people, if there, if, if there are animals, if there are precious stones, if there are anything, it's because he made it. Devil's not too bright. All of these things I will give thee. Now we find out who Satan is and what he really wants. This was his problem in heaven. This is his problem after he got kicked out of heaven. And this is his problem until the day toward the end of the thousand years of Jesus' rule on earth. And he's chained away. This is his problem. If, I give you all these things, if, this is what Satan wants, you will fall down and worship me. Some of the biggest fools you'll ever run into are people who want to be worshipped. And some other fools are those that will bow down and give worship to anyone other than our God. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Get out of here. For it is written. In this word, I have a, I don't know if I move this, you can see it. I have a stack of Bibles. It's written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. You don't serve Jesus today and Satan tomorrow and Jesus the next day and Satan the next day. Choose who you'll serve and serve him. And then the devil leaveth him. Finally he left. And behold, this is beautiful. Jesus is still hungry. Jesus still needs food, and he needs to be cared for. You know what angels were created for? We were created to have fellowship with God. That's why he made human beings. Before God created human beings, God created the angels, and the angels were committed to minister. If you need ministering to, the angels will minister to you. Of course, if you're going to take the devil's suggestion, everything he comes up with, the temptation, then that's another story. But if you'll hang in there, God knows what your needs are. He will not leave your needs unministered to. The devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. We're going to go to Mark now. Mark only has two verses. Mark 1, 12 and 13. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan. And with the wild beasts, that leads me to believe 
I would not preach it as this is definitely what happened, but it leads me to believe that he was out in the open. And there are many places in desert settings. You don't always have a cave you can hide in. You don't always have a structure to protect you. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. That's all Mark says about it. Very short. We go to Luke. Luke says a little bit more, just about the same Matthew does, but let me read it real quickly. Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, the area where he had been with John the Baptist, because you need water for baptism, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Jesus said unto him, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Just a real quick film strip. This, 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 this. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. Ooh, you can say it's mine. I know a lot of people that, that come to California. I remember when I lived in Texas, same thing. People would come from the northern United States to visit us, and maybe we were 5 miles or 20 miles or 35, 40 miles from the border. And they'd say, Let's just cross the border so we can say we've been to Mexico. Well, I've been to most of Mexico. There's a few states I haven't been in, but I've preached in an awful lot of them. I don't have to say I've been to Mexico. Why? Because I have been. But somebody that just wants to step over the border so I can say I've been in another country, or order tacos and tortillas so they can say they're bilingual. And the devil said unto him, All this power I give thee, and the glory of them, for what is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I give it. It's mine, I could give it to you. If thou therefore will worship me. Oh, he wants to be worshipped. So many people do what they do because they want to be looked up to they want to be they want to be worshiped and jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me satan for it's written that thou shalt not that thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve and he brought him to jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down from hence for it's written he shall give his angels, to, Satan knows the word, he shall give his ch angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands lest, or they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended the temptation, he departed from him for a season. The devil is never gone. You're good. You can quote scripture to him. You can win. You can not give in to temptation. But it ain't over. He'll be back tomorrow. From here, and I need to mark in this Bible, the Next thing that happens, Jesus began begins selecting disciples. He's getting ready for over three years of God 
his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. God was in heaven, but in Bethlehem, as was prophesied, his divinity took on humanity, and he began living among the people. Men usually got married at a much later date than women did. Women were usually promised at six to eight, maybe 10 years old, but married at 14 or so because by then they could have babies, they could cook, they could satisfy their husband, but the husband had to have an education, a career, the tools of his trade, and 30 years old was about the time that people began doing what their life calling was. So I said this was October 3rd of 16. So next Sunday night, hey, we're going to talk about water into wine. I'm going to close our video, and we have a few minutes left tonight that I'll be chatting with my people that are here live. And until our next video, blessings on you.